I'm Annie Studebaker and I bring to you an abundance of knowledge from our South Texas rural communities. Follow me as I take you on a journey of inspiration and insight that will offer a deeper connection with people and businesses. Recycling is an important way for individuals and businesses to reduce waste and its negative impact. Today, we will visit three businesses that take recycling very serious. Lax International Warehouse, the City of McAllen Recycling Center, and the City of Edinburgh Department of Solid Waste Management. Hector Padilla, Director of Customer Service and Sustainability Coordinator for Lax International Warehouse, will give us a tour of the facility and explain the process for recycling. This is where it all starts. Hector will explain the process for recycling the raw materials. This is our distribution area. This is where we open all the furniture that is made ready for use by the customer. This is sold merchandise and we're getting ready to load it into trucks. We do a process called deluxing. It's where we open all the packages, assemble, uh, put hardware on, clean it up and, and, and dust it off, and remove any packaging like the styrofoam you see here and the plastics back here. We pre-sort it here to make it easier for processing in the recycling area, whereas the plastic is put in one bag and styrofoam in another. Cardboard boxes are cut up and put into other boxes and then moved over to the recycling makes area. It yeah, makes it easier to deal with it. Sure does. Sure does. Lax International Warehouse is the distribution center for all Lax Valley stores. Every business day, furniture and appliances are received, unpacked, and made ready for delivery, leaving behind styrofoam, cardboard, plastic, and wooden skids. Each one of these so-called unwanted items are sorted and processed for recycling, soon to be shipped back to manufacturers to use as a new product. Many things are now being made of recycled cardboard, such as flower pots, biodegradable garden supplies, gift bags, and many, many more. We're standing here uh, between plastics and cardboards. These uh, materials are getting ready to be recycled. Tell me about the process here. Okay, we bail the cardboard. All the boxes that we open we break them down, feed them into our horizontal balers, and make bales out of them. These bales weigh approximately about a thousand pounds each, and we'll produce anywhere from four to five bales a day, depending again on the output, uh, how much product we open. This is actually our first, uh, our first recycling program was this cardboard. And this is the, the, first, the only thing we were doing for several years before we expanded to plastics, then to styrofoam. This comes from our outlying locations and our distribution here where we open the boxes for delivery. Hector will demonstrate the process to producing a bale of cardboard. Okay, this is one of two balers that we are currently using for cardboard. This is a 60 inch horizontal baler. What we do is feed the cardboard boxes from all the case goods that we open. We cut them down and toss them into the machine and the press will come down and build the bale slowly. We'll make it in the excess. These bales weigh about uh, anywhere from 1,100 to 1,300 pounds. We produce probably in, in excess of uh, about four to five bales a day, depending on the output. We see the cardboard baler and the volume of production the machine puts out. Right here we got a bale that's ready to come out. It's already been made to the size we want it at. He's getting ready to open the door. And what they're going to do here is put the baling wire so it'll hold the bale together. Uh, it's a little process. Uh, it takes a little few minutes to do. Uh, they hold the press in the down press the way it is now and you'll see the plate has some grooves in it and he can feed the wire from one side to the other and back out to the bottom. And then they tie it at this end before they release the bell out of the baler. Now he's gonna get that forklift up against the machine. As that bell drops out, it'll fall right onto the forks of the forklift. Then he'll haul it off and get it weighed. Cardboard boxes are pressed, baled, weighed, and shipped to manufacturers to continue its cycle for reuse. What we have here is a scale that we, that we purchased so we can not only monitor production but also weigh the product before we send it out. It makes it easier for us to build the customer whoever buys it from us. And it's a digital scale and it's pretty accurate actually within a half a pound. Uh, it's not a commercial scale that you would use to sell or trade but it is something that will give us a, a good idea of what we're producing. This particular belt weighs 1157 pounds and that's about the average weight that we get from uh, each bale that we produce. 
recycled plastic can be used in almost as many applications and products as prime plastic. For example, packaging, construction, clothing, landscaping, liners and bags, automotive products, and many, many more. Plastic is, is polyethylene and we bag it. We have a little system that we created for the company and where the stores can use these bags that we had specifically for a certain frame that we bought, and I'll show you in a minute, where the guys will separate that, and that's crucial because the more separating they do for us at the locations, the easier it is for us to take care of it here and process it. The, the plastic is fed into a horizontal bailer similar to the one for the cardboard in that it makes the bells also about 800 to 1,000 pounds each. We're standing in front of these bales of plastic Plastic is used to wrap up furniture and a whole lot more. Uh, Hector, how come these are stored indoors? The, the person who we send this to and sell this to, they don't want it to get wet. The water affects the machinery that they use to process the plastic. So we're asked to keep it indoors and to keep it dry. Uh, you can see the weights on them. This is 982, this is 1,000 pounds. Uh, we'll probably produce about also about four or five bales a day. And it's all remade either into stretch products like stretch film, uh, plastic covers for sofa covers, mattress covers, uh, plastic that you would find to line the bottom of a flower bed, things like that. I'm always amazed to see what people can do with stuff that otherwise might just have been thrown away. I'm happy to know that we're continuing to push towards the development of more sustainable ways of producing goods from recyclable materials. The amount of styrofoam it takes, this is about three pounds, and this is about three pounds of styrofoam unprocessed. This is what it would take to make approximately one block, three pound block of styrofoam. So what you're sitting on is blocks that are around 50 pounds each. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, it takes about 40 to make a pallet and make some feasible to ship because it's about a ton. So it's approximately about uh, 2,000, maybe 2,100 pounds. Per when you think about it, roughly depending on the density of the styrofoam, because the denser the styrofoam, the more it's going to produce. The more air in it, the softer it is, the less it'll produce. Probably takes about anywhere from three bags, three and a half bags to make one block. The white styrofoam that you see behind me, most of it comes from the furniture we unpack for delivery and for display. So a lot of it is clean, it's, it's pristine, it's white. That is uh, a material that's, that's probably raw when it, was, when it was produced, so it's the cleanest form. It's like you would find bleach paper towels, the same thing with this, it's just, it's natural, it's new. It's, it's new. When we get the consumer styrofoam back, like eggshell cartons, uh, styrofoam cups from restaurants, and whatnot, they'll produce a color. Usually the color becomes almost a green to a black, it didn't matter what color it is when it goes in. But because of the heat, it changes the color of the, of the styrofoam. And it usually is between a green and a black. Basically, just kind of take a quick glance, this is only about two days worth. So you can imagine the problem we had to contend with when we we're talking about a week's worth of styrofoam and hauling it to the landfill. When we started with the process, of, of, when we started with the idea of looking for something else more responsible to deal with the solid waste, uh, we weren't just looking at where we could basically sweep it under the carpet and forget about it. We're looking to do something responsible with it in that I had heard a little bit about recycling, but I came to find out it was surprising to me that no one in the valley was recycling styrofoam. Right now, as far as I understand it, we're the only company that is recycling styrofoam in the Rio Grande Valley. We put the first machine into uh, commission. Uh, we ran that for a couple of years and realized that it wasn't as big as we'd like it to be and the, the capability was not what we wanted. So we started looking for another machine. Now that we knew what we were looking for, it was uh, a lot easier to find what we wanted. So we found this machine that we have now, and it's been doing a great job for us. And one of the reasons that we were faced to deal with the problem ourselves was in looking for some, an out for this material, because we were in the valley and it seemed like we were isolated from the rest of the country, because, because it's so light, it would take about approximately about 50 bags to fill up an 18-wheeler. The weight on that would probably be about 2,100 pounds. You just can't really ship that and be cost effective. So the option was, one, we had to find a responsible uh, uh, way of dealing with it, but it had to remain here. We had to figure out the problem here. And this machine has made it easier to ship. We now can ship 44,000 pounds in one trailer versus 2,100 pounds. 
So that's a big difference for us and it's made it uh, a lot more feasible. Now the companies that are starting to uh, look into using this as a raw material, uh, it's starting to grow. So the, the word is getting out that the styrofoam is being recycled and being used as a raw material and you're going to see more and more companies uh, asking for it as a raw material. I know right now we're also working with, uh, working with the uh, UTPA and working with the department, I believe it's uh, ready use, and they're looking at ways to, to use it and to find entrepreneurs who are willing to take uh, this on as a, as a recycling uh, end user product to, to make things out of. And one of the things that was discussed are, were like uh, stepping stones, where they could be formed and colored into stepping stones. Uh, other things like uh, were considered was uh, benches, park benches, things wow, like that. So that's very interesting. It has potential. It has potential. Although the recycling process varies among centers, their ultimate goal is the same, to minimize waste. Coming up next, we will take you on a tour of a recycling center that offers their community a drop-off center as well as pickup services. Don't go away. It was only, like, this big. I didn't know toothpicks counted. I just think I drive better with a cleaner car. You mean cigarette butts aren't biodegradable? I didn't do it. I'm a need freak. <laughs> that stuff was in the back of my truck last time I saw it. I missed. I come from a family of litterers. One billion pieces of litter, zero good excuses. Hey, you dropped something. Don't tell my mom, okay? Recycling turns materials that would otherwise become waste into valuable resources. It has become a daily activity for more than 100 million Americans. Its benefits are amazing. It protects and expands U.S. manufacturing jobs and increases U.S. competitiveness. It reduces the need for landfill and incineration. It saves energy. It decreases emissions of greenhouse gases that contribute to global climate change. It conserves natural resources such as timber, water, and minerals. And it helps sustain the environment for future generations. The product that would otherwise be considered waste goes through a process of sorting and processing for recyclables into raw materials such as fibers, then manufacturing these materials into new products and ultimately to be purchased as recycled products. Here is something interesting to know. Recycling one aluminum can saves enough energy to run a television for three hours. Did you know that 350,000 aluminum cans are produced every minute and 80 billion aluminum pop cans every year? That's crazy! Well, get this. During the time it has taken me to tell you about these fun facts, at least 100,000 12-ounce aluminum cans are being made. Crazy. So remember to reuse, reduce, and recycle. The first step to recycling is collection and processing. Although the process varies from community to community, there are four primary methods, curbside, drop-off centers, buyback centers, and deposit refund programs. Regardless of the method each community uses to collect these recyclables, most are sent to a recycling center to be sorted and prepared into marketable items for manufacturing. The second step to the recycling process is manufacturing. Once the recyclables are sorted and cleaned, they're ready to be distributed to the adequate manufacturers. Finally, the process of purchasing the recycled product. Purchasing the recycled product completes the recycling loop. So now you know, 
Look for the closest recycling center and join the many Americans that reduce, reuse, and recycle. Coming up next, we will visit the City of Edinburgh Recycling Center, which is a great department for solid waste management. They take used materials that would otherwise become waste, process them, and send them off to manufacturers to make recyclable products ready for sale. See you shortly. Come on, it was microscopic. The wind just took it. And the trash can was like three yards away. These shoes are not made for walking. Candy wrappers were making me feel fat. I'm a very busy man. So what happened was it jumped out of my hand. It was a jogger and she looked thirsty, so I threw her my water bottle. One billion pieces of litter, zero good excuses. Hey, you dropped something. I had three cups and only two cup holders. What was I supposed to do? The Recycling Center is a drop-off location and it offers a recycling convenience for either the city uh, residents of Edinburgh or anybody that wants to recycle. It's also open to the public, uh, to anyone that wants to come over and drop off their recyclables. And you can drop off cardboard, newspaper, magazines, aluminum cans, tin cans, mixed paper, and plastics number one and number two. It's a drive-through convenience. Um, you can drive through our area and we have different uh, slots where you can place your materials and once you're here uh, our employees can help you sort out the items and you can just drop them off. Here are some more fun facts about recycling. In order to produce each week's Sunday paper 500,000 trees must be cut down. That's crazy! But if we recycle all of our newspapers, we could save about 250 million trees each year. The good news is that 27% of the newspapers produced in America are recycled. Yes, that is good news. It's very important for you to take a look at the plastics because they do have a symbol, a recycling symbol, and it's the little three arrows that go around and inside they have a number. All the plastics are coded from number one to number seven, and that's a code for the recyclers. Uh, we cannot mix the plastics, and we only take the number ones and number twos. And that depends on um, the markets that are available here in the Valley. We have uh, very few markets, and that's why we only collect the materials that we collect. We also take the motor oil the lead acid batteries and also the used filters for the oil is five gallons per person per week and it's open to anybody that wants to stop by um, no businesses we only allow um, do-it-yourselfers which um, they can change it at, at the house and if you don't have anywhere to uh, dispose of it you can go ahead and recycle it and drop it off here with us and being that it's a drop-off location Pretty much all the materials that we collect are um, pretty much clean because it's coming from the house and the residents or anybody that comes and drops off, um, they do it themselves. So once we get it here, it's pretty much clean already. Our employees just have to go through it again and see if, you know, if anything was left behind. But everybody is really, really good as far as doing their part and in, um, in taking care of that the materials are clean. We do have different businesses that stop by as well. Uh, we have the university um, that has a recycling program and they come and drop off um, some of the materials as well and we have the schools recycling as well here in Edinburgh and everybody is pretty much in interested in, in recycling so in going green and they're always calling asking us for events for programs and um, as we go along we do try to incorporate different programs to meet the community's needs um, so, um, we do have different events throughout the year. I hope that this tour has been educational as well as enjoyable. The various types of recycling services offered to our communities, such as drop-off, pick-up, and business-based services, all share the same ultimate goal, which is to minimize waste. Some municipalities that have established recycling centers also offer a variety of programs that educate the public as well as motivate them to reduce, 
reuse, and recycle.